After five amazing years of Unity development and a ton of C-Sharp wizardry, it's time for a change. After surfing the web, forums, and talking to ChatGPT, it is time for a new engine, the Flux engine. Hosting a ton of useful features and an amazing resemblance to Unity, it is the most likely candidate to take its place. Forget Godot and Unreal, and let's take a look at the Flux engine. All right, guys, so welcome back. On the previous tutorial, we did the shooting. Now we are going to create the enemy and the health component. Right, to create the enemy, let's go and create an empty actor. Let's call this enemy manager. Um, let's then just duplicate the player. Okay. Send it over here, for example. Let's rename it to enemy and uh, enemy collider. All right, that's impossible. Let's also remove the player script and leave the rest. Let's go into materials and create a new enemy material. Let's go for orange red. I think that's good. Sometimes it doesn't allow us to drag and drop the material directly. I think it has to do with the hierarchy. So we can go here into the capsule and we can either drag and drop or select the material. All right, awesome. Returning to the enemy script, since its behavior is pretty simple, it will have an idle moving and attacking states. We don't need to make a very complex state machine, so we are going to do the same as we did with the shooting state machine, which is an enum state machine. All right, so let's go ahead and try to look at the enemy, to the enemy and create an another class which will be called enemy state. Right here on the enemy, we are going to have a public enemy state it's called enemy state. And we of course are going to have a public void handle state. Handle state like we had in the shooting state. And here we will do another switch statement. Enemy state. Add the missing cases. All right, awesome, awesome. And now we can go and say void uh, enemy state idle. Void enemy state movement. And void enemy state attacking. All right, awesome. Here on the idle state, we will do nothing. On the movement state, we are going to get close to the player. Um, and if close enough, attack, right? We here, we are going to look at the player and spawn some projectiles. And spawn projectiles, right? Awesome. Let's add them here. So, how are we going to deal with the movement? Um, the movement here is a little bit different than Unity. We would have the nef mesh component. Here, unfortunately, we don't, but they provide us with this script. And this script basically has a target and is every frame just checking if the position of the target has changed and then calculating a path to that target and then uh, moving along said path. I find this a little bit confusing. So I actually created my own components here in the nav mesh components. This script will be available for downloads down in the description. In fact, all the project files are available for downloads in the description. All right, so taking a look at this nav mesh agent component, I have divided it into several parts. So we can set a destination, which will either return a true if a path was found and false if none was found. Then we have a move along path, which returns true if the agent is moving and false if there is no path or the agent has reached its destination. And we also have the stop and resume, the stop and resume agents, and we can also clear a path. These are just some helper functions to be used here. We also have a lot of useful variables, apart from the speed, loop, speed, and stopping distance. We can also update the rotation or not. 
and we also have here these uh, properties which are very useful as you can see in a moment so get, getting back to our enemy when we are in the movement we need a reference to the player so let's also add here a public player player so override on start so there are two main ways to find the player we can go player is equals level dot find either an actor or a script since player is a script we want to find the scripts so level dot find player or we can go player is equals actor dot scene dot find script uh, of the play script this one is better this way we are only finding scripts that inside the scene that this actor is also a part of and this one we'll find in all open scenes so let's go with the second one right awesome let's not forget to update our handle states so let's go public override on updates exactly and we can handle states there all right awesome so here on the enemy state movement we want again if player is equals null we still want to check for it this is just a precautionary this is just a precaution really all right so now we need to calculate the distance right so we are also going to need a reference here public nav mesh agent let's call it nav agent all right let's get back here let's go nav agents dot set destination into the player dot actor dot position all right so this just finds a path right uh, to move along the path we can go nav agents dot move along path all right awesome now that we are moving the agent we need to check if we are close enough so first we need to calculate the distance and then we need to see if the distance is below a certain threshold so let's add that threshold here so we can go public load attack distance equals an 07 in centimeters all right let's not forget this so let's add that conversion so float attack distance it's going to be equals attack distance times 100. all right so now that we need to calculate the distance there are two things we can do we can either calculate the direct distance towards the player or we can go if nav agents dot remaining distance is less than attack distance then we can change states to another state but we haven't yet implemented this so let's implement so let's go void change enemy state enemy state target state and like usual if the current enemy state is equals the target state we just want to return nothing to do we're already in that state enemy state is equals target state so let's go and change the enemy state to attacking all right awesome possum so we have now finished implementing this behavior now on the enemy attacking first we need to be looking at the player so we can go vector 3 direction is equals to player dot actor dot position minus actor dot position which will give us the direction towards the player and now the actor dot orientation is going to be quaternion dot slurp we don't want it to immediately look at the player we want it to be a smooth look at all right so let's go get the actor's present rotation uh, present orientation and then we can go and quaternion dot look rotation send in the direction and the speed will be a look speed times time not delta time right now we do not have the look speed let's add it into the agent here below speed we can duplicate this and add here look speed all right and it should be okay here sorry here i wrote loop speed instead of look speed all right awesome possum and now we need to spawn the projectiles so to do the spawning of projectiles we can either copy and paste this uh, shooting uh, state machine that we have here in the player or 
we can make another component, which I think would be the smartest move. So we can reuse that script uh, wherever we want. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. Let's call this shoot component. Um, there was something that we had here in the player called the shooting state. Let's drag it to the shoot component folder. And let's go ahead and create a class called shoot component. So what we are going to do is basically copying what was here inside the player shooting. So let's go ahead and copy all of this. Copy. Let's paste it here. Let's add the missing variables. So we have a shooting. We are still missing some variables. Let's also go ahead and show this in the editor. All right, awesome, awesome. So we are going to have to modify this a little bit for it to work. The first change is to make this public. So now we are going to send in a Boolean. He's shooting. And we are going to send this shooting into the idle state, right? Because the idle state is always waiting for input. So instead of input getting mouse button down, we are just going to send in the bool is shooting. So if is shooting, then we are going to go to this state and then to this state and we will be in this loop eternally. All right, awesome, awesome. This is basically most that we need to do with this component. So let's go back into the enemy. Let's add here another component. So let's go public, uh, shoot component, shoot component. All right, so now that we have the shooting states, let's go shoot component dot handle shooting and send in the true. So this is basically while we are in this state, it will always be shooting. But for now, it will enter this state and it will eternally be in this state. So what we want to do is again to get the player distance. distance and we want to go vector 3 dot distance and get the distance of the player dot actor dot position and the current position and if distance is greater than the attack distance then we want to change the enemy states to enemy state dot movement so that we can get close to it all right so this should be most of what we need to do. Let's test it out. So now that we have here the enemy, let's add here the enemy component. Let's also add the nav mesh component and the shoot component. Right, awesome. Let's add in the properties. This one will leave open. It will find when it initializes. The actor to move will, of course, be this one, although it will find one automatically. Since this is a rigid body, as we can see here, we want the movement to be rigid body velocity. Right, awesome, awesome. Uh, we also want to debug the path, and let's make this a little bit bigger, like 70. To shooting, we are going to select the projectile and the spawn point let's just shoot one projectile per second something very important that we forgot was to change enemy state to state enemy state dot movement so that we can find the movement something that we also want to do is to change some of the navigant properties so navigant dot set actor to move we are going to send in this actor nav agent dot speed is going to be the agent speed and we want to update rotation but let's go nav agent dot loop speed and send in our current loop speed and to view the distance or the attack distance we can then go on to on debug draw so let's go override 
on the backdrop if enemy states is not equals to either we do not want to draw if we are in either uh, then if enemy states is equals to enemy states dot movement we want to go gizmos dot draw wire sphere the center will be this actor's position the radius will be the attack distance and the color let's make it red in red we are not in range so we are changing we are charging in that direction so if we copy this and instead make the attacking we can just change this color to green all right awesome awesome all right something that i forgot to mention is that after all this work the nav the nav mesh agent requires a navigation mesh so to make the nav mesh we can go here and create a new actor and we can call it now we can call it nav mesh to place here everything that is related to the nav mesh we can go to other and we can drag and drop the nav mesh bounds volume as you can see it creates a massive volume the reason that it, the player is carving stuff is because that the player is marked as fully static and what we want to do is to have the player as not fully static in fact, nothing that is related to the player should be fully static. So let's go and create to none and apply this to all the children. And the enemy is also here fully static. Here he is not. I have already changed this and I forgot. So let's select to none. All right. So if we now update our uh, nav mesh, we can see that it now has its bounds only here where it is supposed to, which is awesome. So if we try and press play, we will see now that the agent is moving towards the player and is shooting. Let's also change the speed because now it has the same speed as the player. Let's change it to three, or in fact, let's change it to two and let's take another look. So as you can see, it is red. If there is no player and it becomes blue and it becomes sorry it becomes green when we are close to the player uh, now let's make this a little bit more interesting right so it's just the enemy is just following in a straight line nothing much going on so let's create here an empty empty actor let's name this empty actor obstacles All right in the obstacles let's go ahead and create a new actor obstacle here let's send in a cube model uh, let's place this guy 50 let's also scale him up to two let's scale him to two i don't think that 50 is enough it's 100 sorry Let's add a collider so that it can carve the nav mesh. And let's rename this to obstacle model and obstacle collider. Right. In the materials, let's also add here the wall material. And let's also add this obstacle to the prefabs folder. All right. Now we can change the position of this obstacle however we want. All right, guys, okay, so we have finished our tutorial with the AI. We can see that the path is calculated in real time. We can also see that once we reach the close distance, it will start attacking. And when we are far away, the attack range will turn red, indicating that it has to move towards the player. Awesome. So on the next tutorial, we are going to deal with the health component. So look forward to that. And uh, something interesting called events. Uh, if you do not know what they are, uh, I suggest you look it up before you watch the other tutorial, because we are going to use them a lot. All right, I hope you have enjoyed. Like and subscribe so you don't miss out. Peace, guys.